folks, uh, welcome to my next video. Uh, this one is uh, an overview of my time in Hoi An. Uh, currently recording it from my new accommodation in Hoi, but uh, the video itself is about Hoi An. Um, what I'll be doing is uh, talking about uh, what I got to do, where I got to go, uh, a couple of near misses I had uh, that kind of slowed me down a bit. Um, what, I, uh, what I think of Hoi An, um, what I go back, all that sort of stuff. Also, uh, at the end of the video, I'll have two, uh, two key things that you might be really interested in, so uh, stick around for them, particularly around uh, best foods and uh, foods and drinks, uh, and also what it cost me for a month in Hoi An on a um, moderate uh, budget, uh, slash uh, also uh, uh, impaired by the fact that I had a couple of new misses that slowed me down for doing a few things. But to kick it off, what I'm going to do is uh, run you through my uh, my Airbnb where I stayed. Bit of an unusual Airbnb this one because it was actually a uh, a place that you can book through Airbnb or through um, a lot of the uh, hotel accommodation bookings. Um, then I'll uh, move on into a uh, bit of how how you get around, uh, walkability, a uh, bit of stuff about Old Town in uh, in uh, some of the. Um, the, the cool things around the, uh, the history and architecture and all that sort of stuff, which I think is really cool. Um, and also some of the food uh, food scene there, the nearby attractions. I've already done a video on one of those nearby attractions. That would be the video on Ni uh, Son, um, uh, which is a, um, a, a sanctuary for, uh, it's an archeological uh, sanctuary, UNES UNESCO, uh, um, World Heritage Site. Uh, so click on the card link, uh, which should be somewhere above, um, and you'll be able to go and watch that video. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. So here's, uh, here's a bit of a rundown of my Airbnb, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, kick off with that. Okay, so this is just a quick little video tour of the Airbnb that I'm currently staying in. When you walk in, um, so the front door's just around behind me, um, you've got a, um, a very small, but for my purposes, sufficient little lounge area. Um, there's no air conditioning in this section. Uh, there is air conditioning in the bedroom, which I'll get to in a minute. As you come around, you'll notice I've got uh, the chair sitting in the middle of the walkway there. That's because in this lounge area, there's no power points near where I've got the computer set up. Um, so the only way to have a power cord to the computer without tripping over it all the time is to put it there and then uh, use the, t the chair just to hold the um, power, the, the, the weighty part of the power cord up. But anyway, um, here's the little kitchenette. It's minute. It's actually not the kitchenette that's photographed in the Airbnb advertisement, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but then in reality, you're not going to cook much in Vietnam. Not when you can go out and get dinner for $10. It's just not worth the effort. Unless you're really into cooking your own food. But anyway, coming into the uh, bedroom. Um, just going to walk through here. Um, this is where there is air conditioning. As you can see, there's a balcony there which extends around from the side. I'll just come through and turn around. So that you can get a bit of an idea. So the camera doesn't do it justice because it doesn't have a wide angle lens unfortunately. But it's not a bad size room. Um, again the Airbnb uh, advertisement makes it look bigger. But then they've got a wide angle lens. Um, bathroom is right off the side of the bedroom. A little bit of storage space on one side. Which I've made a mess of. And then the actual bathroom. Here, um, again, it's not a bad size, not, not a bad uh, little setup. Um, what else? Uh, the, the balcony looks out over the street. I'll walk out onto the balcony and show that in a second. The upside to that is it gives you a little bit of environment to sort of look at when you're sitting outside. The downside is it's Vietnam, so everyone's honking their horns every 30 seconds, like you just probably heard just then. Um, that tends to settle down by about 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night um, and doesn't tend to start again until about 7 in the morning. 
So we'll just go outside the door. So as a result, it doesn't really impact my slope. A uh, little bit of a table here, which I'm currently using just to dry off my pool towel. A little bit of a view out. There's the street. Lots and lots of bikes. So it's not like there's amazing views, but it's a, a nice little neighbourhood. Um, some cool little houses around it. Um, there is a clothes dryer there, which is kind of useless because it's one rod. I did a load of washing the other day, which had six t-shirts in it. Had to go and find some coat hangers to hang on it. And then, of course, they all blew off. So probably needs a new clothes dryer, like a uh, drying rack. But otherwise, there is a laundry downstairs with an actual clothes dryer, electric uh, clothes dryer, but I don't like using them. Um, I think it's a bit of a waste of power at the minimum. Plus, I'll probably end up shrinking my t-shirts. So, it's a pretty, um, pretty small space, but for what it is and for what I need, it's perfect. The TV is tiny and also they advertise the TV as having um, cable channels and so on. If you can speak um, uh, Vietnamese, that's fantastic. There are no English language channels, which is kind of understandable. I'm in Vietnam. So the old lappy over there tends to uh, uh, be used for any work activity plus uh, a bit of Netflix. All right, I'll walk outside after this and uh, get a bit of a, a video of the exterior of the facility and uh, go from there. So just to the right here is reception. And we come around the corner to an awesome little pool. So this is my first little stint of doing a bit of a walking tour, but I thought I might do a quick little video of walking through uh, some of the streets and laneways as I go to dinner tonight. It's a pretty interesting place to walk around. I've done a lot of walking around in the last few days. I'm not going to do all of it, but I'm just going to do some. Uh, so I'm going to just flip this around now so you can see where I'm going. And yeah. is actually just the, the local streets around my Airbnb and then down towards the river. Um, I, I walk this path that I'm about to turn into now on a frequent basis, at least two or three times a day, because it's a, an access point to a lot of the places I wanted to go to, including where I'd go for dinner some nights and uh, routinely for breakfast. Um, so uh, um, you do a lot of walking down these side alleys it's interesting, Hoi An's an exceptionally walkable city. If you uh, are looking for somewhere where you can just walk around everywhere, this is the city for you. That said, this uh, footage you're seeing right now is probably some of the best footage of the uh, quality of footpaths in Hoi An. Hoi An is littered with broken footpaths. So if you've got mobility issues, you're probably going to struggle uh, a bit. You do find that uh, you have to walk on the road a lot to get around the broken uh, pavement. You also, you'll also find in Old Town that the uh, footpaths are actually very, very narrow and you'll find that you have to walk on the road because there is no footpath for you to walk on. And what there is, is parking space for all the motor scooters. Thing about the, uh, the footpaths is sort of demonstrated a bit here. Um, you can see how narrow the footpath is starting to become, and you can see that they've put a lot of uh, decorations and plants and so on. On either side, you can see scooters parked. In a couple of seconds, you'll see a white van come past me, and uh, that van, I swear, brushed my left arm as it went past me. That's how close they get to you. So you've got to be careful. Um, it can be a bit of a risky place to walk around from uh, what I've experienced. Well, where we are now, this is the next day. Um, just starting to walk down towards the uh, the markets. Um, the the, uh, the the streets around here are very, very crowded. Uh, lots of scooters, lots of stalls. We're right on the edge of Old Town now, so you'll notice a bit of a change to uh, 
uh, the hustle and bustle and the nature of the the uh, architecture and so on. It's a it's a pretty interesting place. When you actually get into the true old town section, all the scooters and so on are banned. There's no cars, no scooters, um, so, but you still do have um, some push bikes and those dudes with the little rickshawy things. We are in uh, Old Town, right up the end of Old Town, actually quite, quite close to the Japanese covered bridge, which you can't see at the moment because it's under renovations. So there's no footage of that, sorry. Um, as you can see, no motorbikes, no cars, push bikes uh, going past every once in a while. Much more sedate. Um, I unfortunately managed to lose some of my footage of some of the architecture around Old Town, so I can't really show you much of that. I don't have a couple of shots where I zoom in, just coming up now, uh, from the other side of this bridge here. Um, walked over the other side of the bridge, much more sedate side of the river. But uh, the architecture, uh, you can see a bit of it from zooming in on that side. Uh, I'd, I'd love to know how old some of these buildings are. Around. Um, now I want to show you my favourite coffee shop, Hoyan Roastery Number 2. Uh, it's uh, in Old Town. Just videoing up the top stairs now. I can't understand why it's empty at the moment. It's it's lunchtime, and my God, this place is amazing. Look at the views out the windows and the decor. This place is incredible. I sat out here on the balcony. You can sit on the balcony and look outside, look down the street, watch everything that's going on, and it's just an incredible place. Uh, I've just ordered a, um, a, my first Vietnamese style coffee, it's a, an egg coffee, um, no idea what it's going to be like, but uh, as I pan around you can see uh, the street behind me, similar streetscape in front of me as well, so pretty cool place to be. I'm just going to flip the camera around and this is the view from my little spot. Egg coffee. No idea what this is going to be like. Oh, it's very thick. Let's bring the camera down again. That's very thick. Look at that. Oh, let's give it a try. Oh my god, that's beautiful. I'm not sure how I'll go drinking it. I might have to use that spoon a fair bit. It's really, um, it's really quite thick. It doesn't really taste much in the way of an egg flavour. You've got a coffee flavour, and I think that might be nutmeg on top. Mmm. That's incredible. So there's a trick for new plants. As I'm uh, getting down through this uh, coffee, unbeknownst to me, you dig down a bit, and there's actually a thin layer at the bottom, which is pure coffee. Um, which I didn't know about until I started staring into it about halfway in. Um, now I'm getting my coffee here. Um, as I said when I first um, recorded, didn't taste a lot like coffee. That's why. Anyway, uh, stir it up a bit before you, <laughs> before you have it um, to get the coffee flavour. But it's still great because um, it's good and strong now. And uh, I, I kind of needed a little bit of a, a, a wake up here. Just back onto the uh, streetscape just quickly for a moment, just to make a point about one of the other things that Hoi An is very famous for. You'll notice on the left there as I'm walking along and on the right now, there's all these um, tailor's shops. Hoi An is pretty much the, the tailor capital of Vietnam. Um, anything you want made, if you want a suit made, if you want uh, a dress made, Hoi An's your place to be. Uh, exceptionally reasonable prices. You can get... Uh, a three-piece suit made from very good quality, tailor-made to you for less than 200, 250 Australian dollars, which is an absolute bargain at, uh, at any cost. Things that Hoi An is famous for, and that's the Lantern Festival. Now, the Lantern Festival is actually an event that is uh, normally occurs on the uh, 14th day of every lunar month. Now, this particular day of recording isn't the 14th day of every lunar month because every night, there's a bit of a mini 
Lantern Festival. As you can see, I'm filming from uh, the bridge up near Old Town. Uh, from here, they get on to uh, small paddle boats, and uh, as you can see, it's pretty crowded, even on a non-14th uh, day of lunar month, um, where they uh, go out, tourists go out, locals go out, um, and put some um, uh, lanterns into the water. Um, into the river, they use uh, motorboats. Tends to be a little bit less hectic, but every now and then there's a few near misses, which can be a bit interesting to watch as you're sitting having your dinner on the riverside. Alluding to the uh, beginning of this video, there's a lot of things you can do around Poyan. Uh, unfortunately, I got uh, hampered by a couple of issues. So one of those, and the, the most significant, was uh, I took a bit of a tumble on my fifth or sixth day in the place. Um, and ended up uh, laid up for almost two weeks with a significant uh, soft tissue injury to my left knee. So I didn't get to go around anywhere near as much as I wanted to. Um, still got to see quite a bit. Some of the other things you can see, there's lots of tools. You can go to uh, Marble Mountain. You can go to uh, uh, Mison, as I've shown in that other video. There's so much you can do. One of the things I really love about Hoi An, though, is the beaches. Um, the video you're currently seeing is An Bang Beach, which um, some people criticise. I loved it. Um, really nice beach, uh, a good mix of locals and tourists. Um, you can look out uh, on a nice day. You can look out straight up to Da Nang, which is uh, uh, quite impressive. Um, well worth going out just to spend time on the beaches. I went there about four times just hanging out on the beaches. There's a great uh, a bunch of... Uh, restaurants and bars that you can pull up a pew and have a have a drink. So anyway, now I'll just move on to uh, some of the uh, uh, costs of living. Um, so I'll start showing you now what it cost me to uh, to live in Hoi An for that month. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, cost of living. Um, so basically the um, uh, the screen here breaks down all the individual items uh, that I had. Oh, sorry, the, the grouping of items that I had. So the accommodation, obviously, it's going to be the largest um, at uh, just under $1,500 Australian, uh, just under 1000 US. Uh, that's for 28 days. Um, so not technically the full month, it was 28 days. Um, travel not involving flights. So what I'm not including in this is uh, my flights to Vietnam because I'm in Vietnam for uh, a couple of months and so it sort of would skew things. I'll put that into an annual budget at the end of the year. Um, so travel not involving flights is basically uh, um, the, the travel between uh, Da Nang and Hoi An when I moved down uh, to Hoi An. Um, a few grabs uh, that I used to get to and from the beaches and so on, um, and that's pretty much it. So um, digital entertainment, what I mean by that is that's my YouTube subscription, that's my Netflix, um, and it's also the eSIM. Now, interestingly, when I, when I arrived in the airport at uh, Da Nang, I, I got a 28-day uh, a, a eSIM, which cost me $29, and that was for unlimited uh, data. And, um, and it also had local phone calls. I topped that up on the second last day I was in Hoi An, um, and for another 28 days, uh, the top up was only $13. So really cheap to get an eSIM in Vietnam. So health insurance, that's a standard every month, it's the same. Um, I don't go with Safety Wing or any of those things that a lot of other people use, they, they sound great, but uh, by Australian standards, they're miles too expensive. $105 uh, a month, uh, and that's through my health insurer in Australia, who gives an international travel health insurance as well. Um, the Australian phone number, I kept that because it just makes life easier with uh, WhatsApp and with notifications from bank banks and so on. But I just dropped it down to a prepaid plan, so $15 Australian. Now, food. Now, this is the interesting thing. I ate out or for those days that I was a little bit late up, used Grab um, food delivery every day. I did not cook once. Well, I ate out um, at least two meals a day every day. Um, and that in total came up to $886.46. Um, the 
other category? Well, that's basically everything from um, any ATM fees that I had to pay, um, any groceries like uh, your um, your washing detergent, all those sorts of things, sunscreen, um, all that sort of stuff. The tours, well, one of those is the Mison tour, which uh, I've mentioned already. Uh, the other one is actually the trip from um, Hoian up to Hui. Now, the reason I've included that is because I actually booked a car um, and booked it as a tour, which you can do through... Um, uh, Airbnb experiences and all those sorts of things. So that is in total um, for 28 days, uh, all eating, all all activities, uh, just short of $3,000 for a month. So there you go. That's Hoi An. That's the cost of living for Hoi An for that uh, 28 days that I was there. Uh, next video will be uh, coming along next week. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about my experiences here in Hawaii or uh, at least one of the uh, places I've been to since I've been here in Hawaii. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking around to the end, and uh, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to subscribe, click like, um, share the video around, and by all means, let me know your experiences in the, uh, the comments section. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.